Hey everyone, welcome back to In and Out with Ram, episode one. So our first guest to this segment is Shyan. He's actually one of my batchmates from VITAP. Now he's pursuing his masters in Europe in Dublin. And I mean, when I talk to him about his uh, experience in co- college, experience in the application process, and now what he's pursuing, I felt like this information should be shared because he had a unique path. He applied through an organization, unlike just putting out applications to colleges. So uh, I'm pretty sure this information is going to be valuable. And let's dive into it. Let's talk to him and let's get to know more. Hi, Shayan. Welcome to In and Out episode one. So I mean, you. We, you must have not known this, but I've named my podcast In and Out. So I think okay. you, you are the first guest to this uh, segment of my channel. So uh, why don't you introduce yourself? Yourself, go ahead and introduce yourself. Yeah, okay. definitely. Um, so hey guys, I'm Shyam Ahmed, and I completed my undergrad in VIT with Shanmukh, a batch of 2021. Yeah, in mechanical engineering. Mm-hmm. And talking about my profile, it uh, I had like a 8.7 GPA overall, mm-hmm. uh, combine all four years of study, and yeah, that's pretty much it. Okay, so uh, I mean, the intent of inviting you to this podcast is to know uh, what is the admission process to Dublin. I mean, right now he's pursuing his masters in uh, mechanical engineering, I believe, with some concentration in Dublin. Uh, I mean, he'll clarify that if I'm wrong. And uh, firstly, like coming to the, uh, before even we jump into the uh, degree specialization or which degree you're pursuing, why did you choose Dublin mm-hmm. specifically to pursue your uh, master's? Uh, well, Dublin as a place is like very cosmopolitan. Mm-hmm. Number one was definitely that. Mm-hmm. You have people coming uh, in from all different backgrounds. And it's very diverse and the study regime over here was very suited to whatever I wanted. Okay. So that is why, you know, Dublin was a, was the best option for me. Okay. Makes sense. So let's, let's get ahead. Uh, so you, as you already mentioned your GPA, can you share more details about your profile, such as your projects, your GRE, your, uh, language test course if any and i believe uh there you must have taken some uh language proficiency test other than english i mean while back back in 2020 while i was looking at germany for universities Mm -hmm. some universities Mm -hmm. asked me if if i had some language test for german separately so just let me know if you have gone through any of that or else just your yeah um additional to my gpa I had like uh, two major projects, mm-hmm. you know, one was my final year or capstone project. Mm-hmm. And apart from that, one project was one which I uh, completed during my internship. Uh, I also had uh, uh, two research papers written on the same projects, one on the capstone one and one on the internship project one. Mm-hmm. Uh, apart from that, uh, one necessity was IELTS or TOEFL, like English language test basically. Mm-hmm. And uh, since uh, I was, you know, I'm studying in Dublin and Dublin is known to be an English speaking country. It's like Ireland. Mm-hmm. So we, I didn't have to give any other test apart from English no. and no GRE too. So that was a very big plus point of, you know, applying to European uh, countries kind of. Okay. I think uh, we, have, we have missed your degree with specialization. What are you exactly pursuing? Oh, okay. So I'm pursuing uh, ME manufacturing engineering. Mm-hmm. So actually my course is not a direct course offered by the university. Mm-hmm. It's offered by an organization called EIT, okay. uh, European Institute of Innovation and Technology. So that is like a European Union organization which offers you know uh, courses and since my course is a manufacturing engineering, it mm-hmm. was offered by EIT manufacturing. Oh. So it's like a double degree program wherein I complete uh, my course two years in two different universities so first university is here in dublin Mm -hmm. uh, that is university college dublin uh, known as ucd Mm -hmm. and my next year starting this august would be uh, alto university in finland helsinki wow that's that sounds amazing actually and like are you doing any research or any thesis or is it just a normal non-thesis degree 
no, it's a thesis degree. I'll have to mm-hmm. finish my thesis in my last semester of study, uh, the mm-hmm. fourth semester kind of, mm-hmm. and it has to be done with a company. So I think we'll uh, see about that later on. Oh, okay. And sorry, uh, like. what universities have you applied like is is it only the dublin part or have you applied to any other universities from different places uh so basically i had an option to select from various uh, university combinations mm-hmm. so since this is like a two year course in two different universities we had options to select which one would be my entry university and which one would be my exit university okay so apart from, so the option which i chose was definitely ucd alto mm mm-hmm. apart from this i had options of university uh, tu wien in vienna mm-hmm. or tu vienna well for you know uh, and ucd then i had polymi polytechnico di milano and mm-hmm. i had uh, uh yeah these three were the ones yes okay so you only applied for these No, no. Apart, this was the programs which was this was the combinations which was offered by EIT, okay. EIT Manufacturing. Okay. Yeah. Apart from this, I had also applied to individually to univers different universities. Hmm. Uh, so I did apply to TU Hamburg in Germany. Hmm. Uh, Technische Hochschule in Goldstadt in again in Germany. Hmm. Then uh, Hochschule Düsseldorf again in Germany. Hmm. Karlsruhe Institute of Technology. uh and uh ovgu like auto fund gorik university so all all of these were in like germany okay apart from that i ha- had applied to five universities in norway as well mm-hmm. which were university of oslo uh uit or arctic university of norway mm-hmm. ntnu or norwegian university of science and technology university of southeastern norway and university of stavanger oh okay and apart from this One more university I applied to was Ecole Centrale de Nantes in France. Okay. So yeah, these were that, the ones. That was a big list. Ah, ah yes, it was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And like, what were your admits from these? Yeah, about that. Uh, for Germany, I received no admits because mm-hmm. like. they require they compulsorily most of the courses which i apply to required german language course and oh. you know, i had uh, not completed that yeah so very important if you are you know planning to apply for germany and apart from that for norway uh, for norway i uh, got admits in two universities which was arctic university of norway for the course uh, industrial mm-hmm. engineering and mm-hmm. ntnu or norwegian university of science and technology for Uh, a course called reliability availability maintainability and safety that's like a uh, one of the courses offered by the university mm-hmm. and also got admit in ecole centrale de nante which was in france for the course advanced manufacturing oh okay and uh, eit manufacturing okay, okay. of course which i'm pursuing right now and uh, out of all these why did you choose the eit and why did like specifically why college dublin dublin college the university of college dublin um basically um, number one reason was definitely the fact that i was able to complete my degree in two different universities mm-hmm. you know which would expose me to a two different cultures two different study patterns and next thing was the scholarship aspect so i got a full mm-hmm. uh, fully funded scholarship from eit wow. manufacturing mm-hmm. so yeah I, i would say these two were the biggest reasons of me choosing eit okay manufacturing course basically i think that was the scholarship part was my next question but you already answered uh, i mean like uh, how did you get this scholarship right in the first place even i researched about european universities but i never came across this uh, european institute of technology eit was that correct Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I I never came across that. I did not know there was scholarship offering scholarship that that to hundred person. So, like, just tell me, just give me an overview. Of how did you come across that? How do you apply to the scholarship, and how does the system work over there? Um, so basically, EIT uh, has like its own portal mm-hmm. where you can log in and you know search for different courses, and it has like vast. Uh, the number of courses you know 
be it manufacturing, be it computer science, mm-hmm. anything, electronics. Yeah. So you just need to go to the right portal and uh, search for your courses, whatever courses you would like to apply for. And if uh, you you know look at it closely, there's like different sections given in each different course catalog, mm-hmm. wherein you can find what are the criteria, what does the university want from you before they you know tell you whether you got the admit or not. Mm-hmm. And then there's a scholarship section as well. Which okay. tells you that if you are eligible for a scholarship, you need to fill an application, write like a letter of motivation and submit that and they will automatically tell you if you got the scholarship or not. Oh. So it's not like a different process, it's mm-hmm. integrated. Oh, okay. So it makes it kind of um, more easier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's actually cool. And like... Uh, yeah, it is. <laughs> let's, let's come to the part where you like after graduation like how are job opportunities in Dublin or uh, in in your next in the place of where you'll be uh, pursuing your second year mm-hmm. and like what is the visa status a career industrial career etc yeah sure definitely so uh, coming to the first question job opportunities in Dublin are good mm-hmm. I mean if you consider mechanical engineering it's not that uh, amazing I would say mm-hmm. but uh, if you're coming in for healthcare specifically like healthcare or anything related to biology you know mm-hmm. biotherapeutics or uh, uh, like something like some engineering related to biology mm-hmm. uh, be it like medical device manufacturing then this place is like heaven on earth for you oh. it's like the biggest hub globally for lo- uh, most of uh, medical facility, medical uh, manufacturing companies, you know, medical device manufacturing. Mm -hmm. And apart from that, computer science is also one of the very hot, you know, career over here. Yeah. And uh, moving to my next university in Finland, Finland is known for energy sector, definitely the Nordics. Mm -hmm. Anything related to the energy sector, you'll be able to find that. Anything related to nuclear engineering or marine engineering. Mechanical engineering has a good scope there, I would say. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, and... Uh, the visa status? Next, next. Yeah, the visa status, uh, Ireland actually is, has a very good, you know, after uh, after graduation visa status. So, basically, you get two years of job search visa kind of thing. Wow. So, which makes life way too easier. Mm-hmm. And in Finland, uh, I'm, I didn't do my research. Last when I did my research, it was 18 months, which was okay. like one and a half years. But now I'm uh, hearing from people that they have also extended it to two years, full 24 months. Wow. Wow. So, yeah, good, uh, you know, career opportunities in both the places. So, it means you can be like you can graduate and you can be unemployed until two months to fi- until two, two years to find a job, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, well, I would say 18 months. Mm-hmm. Because the next six months is like kind of critical. You have to fill in different documents. Mm-hmm. But yeah, overall, you can say two years. Wow. That, that is actually good because uh, in US, I mean, if you file your uh, EAD card applications and all properly, you'll only have like mm-hmm. approximately five months to find a job. If you don't find a job in five months, you're done. You have to leave the country. I mean, there, there are other options as day one CPT, etc. Going to consultancy and all, but I don't think... I mean, anyone prefers that. So, but yeah, that, that is actually good, man. Eighteen months is not 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 at all bad. I mean, it's actually good. Yeah, well, I mean, compared to the five months, is definitely yeah. a lot more. It almost three times. And so yeah. let's let's end it. Let's let's end it with a cherry on the top. Uh, what suggestions would you give to the students who are looking for like uh, pursuing masters or any or any postgraduate studies in Europe, like? From your experience, uh, did you do any mistakes or do you think uh, anyone can do a potential mistake that is very common? Just just give out suggestions. Um, the biggest suggestion I would have is definitely to, you know, uh, apply in time because mm-hmm. time is very, considered very valuable. I'm sure in US also, mm-hmm. but like most of the pe- most of the students or people, you know, applicants that I see make common mistakes are like, not applying in time. Mm-hmm. If the application starts first week of October, 
uh, ideally you should be able to you should actually apply by the end of october at max say mm -hmm. so in that case even if you have some documents you, that, that you did not submit and which the university wants you still have time in hand to you know submit that and do your research properly like search for what courses you want to do mm -hmm. search for what universities offers what courses and what are the specialities of that and yeah just go forward with that that's that's excellent i mean apply early that's the only thing i would say apply early yeah, yeah i mean even in my previous videos i've mentioned it multiple times applying early uh, opens up a chance for you to gain scholarships because there is no competition in the early stage so they might give you uh, of course it's rolling yeah, yeah, if yeah, it, absolutely. if it is rolling admissions it might be another case but applying early has a lot of advantages so yeah that's it uh, thanks shayan uh, i am pretty sure the people will be benefited by watching this video and the insights you've given i hope uh, yeah yeah and that's that's good let's end it here thank you shayan thanks for being the first guest on my podcast segment i really appreciate it Uh, thanks very much for giving me the opportunity yeah yeah thanks man i'll see you bye i'll see you bye bye